Denali National Park and Preserve encompasses 6 million acres of Alaska's interior wilderness. Its centerpiece is the mountain known as Denali, which is 20,320 feet high. The mountain was formerly known as Mount McKinley. This is North America's tallest peak. With terrain of tundra, spruce forest, and glaciers, the park is home to wildlife including grizzly bears, wolves, moose, caribou, and dull sheep. Popular means of exploring are biking, backpacking, and hiking on maintained trails or in the backcountry. Known as moose across North America, but called elk in Europe, Alsace Alsace is the largest member of the deer family. The Alaskan Yukon race, Alsace Alsace gigas, is the largest of all of these creatures. Adult moose range in size from 800 pounds for small adult females to 1,600 pounds for large adult males. They can be up to almost 6 feet tall at the shoulder. Moose range in color from golden brown to almost black, depending on the season and the age of the animal. Newborn calves have a red-brown coat that fades to a light rust color within a few weeks. Moose are often easily recognized by their antlers, carried only by the males. These bony protrusions form within the first year and are produced every summer after that. The willow ptarmigan is the largest of three arctic grouse found in Alaska, which also include the rock and the white-tailed ptarmigan. The thick, wide bill is a trademark of all willow ptarmigan, the largest of Alaska's three ptarmigan species and the Alaska state bird as well. Brown and grizzly bears are classified as the same species even though there are notable differences between them. Kodiak bears, which are brown bears from the Kodiak archipelago, are classified as a distinct subspecies, Ursus arctos middendorfii. Those from the mainland are classified as the subspecies Ursus arctos horribilis. The rich array of vegetation, as well as the milder climate, enables the coastal living brown bears of Alaska to grow much larger than their interior living grizzly cousins. To minimize confusion, we will use the term brown bear to refer to all members of Ursus arctos. The brown bear resembles its close relatives, the black bear, Ursus americanus, and the polar bear, Ursus maritimus. Brown bears are usually larger than black bears, have a more prominent shoulder hump, less prominent ears, and longer, straighter claws. Polar bears are similar in size to coastal brown bears, but are more streamlined, lacking the hump. The varying shapes of these bears are adaptations to their particular lifestyle. Long claws are useful in digging roots or excavating small mammals, but are not efficient for climbing trees. The musculature and bone structure of the hump are adaptations for digging and for attaining bursts of speed necessary for capture of moose or caribou. In Europe, caribou are called reindeer, but in Alaska and Canada, only the semi-domestic form is called reindeer. All caribou and reindeer throughout the world are considered to be the same species, but there are seven subspecies. Rangifer tarandus granti is the predominant subspecies found in Alaska.
Caribou in Alaska are distributed in 32 herds or populations. A herd uses a distinct calving area that is separate from the calving area of other herds, but different herds may mix on winter ranges. In 1906, conservationist Charles Alexander Sheldon conceived the idea of preserving the Denali region as a national park. In October 1915, Sheldon took up the matter with Dr. E. W. Nelson of the Biological Survey of Washington, D.C., and with George Bird Grinnell, with the purpose to introduce a suitable bill in the coming session of Congress. On December 3, 1915, the plan was presented to Alaska's delegate, James Wickersham, who, after some deliberation, gave his approval. The plan then went to the Executive Committee of the Boone and Crockett Club, and on December 15, 1915, it was unanimously accepted. The plan was thereupon endorsed by the club and presented to Stephen Mather, Assistant Secretary of the Interior in Washington, D.C., who immediately approved it. The bill was introduced in April 1916 by Delegate Wickersham in the House and by Senator Key Pittman of Nevada in the Senate. Much lobbying took place over the following year, and on February 19, 1917, the bill passed. On February 26, 1917, Eleven years from its conception, the bill was signed in legislation by the President of the United States, Woodrow Wilson, thereby creating what was called Mount McKinley National Park. In December 1980, with only weeks left in his presidency, Jimmy Carter signed into law legislation that established over 100 million acres of new national parks, preserves, and wildlife refuges in Alaska. Mount McKinley National Park, thereby enlarged from 2 million acres to 6 million, and became known as Denali National Park and Preserve, with new boundaries to encompass entire watersheds and the home ranges of wildlife populations. A female moose, or cow, typically breeds at about 28 months, although breeding has been known to occur as early as 16 months. After a gestation period of about 230 days, cows give birth to calves in the spring. At the time of birth, these babies can weigh in at a mere 28 pounds, but within just five months, calves grow to about 10 times that size. Calves are generally weaned in the fall at the time when the mother is breeding again, and they are chased off just before she gives birth in the spring. Early on our drive through the park, the weather was clear enough such that we could see Denali from the mountain vista portion of the park. Adult male moose engage in the rut in late September and early October. During the rut, the males joust by bringing their antlers together and pushing. Serious battles are rare, with most injuries being minor. Occasionally, however, some individuals die from their wounds. The winner typically mates with several females. During the fall and winter, moose consume large quantities of willow, birch, and aspen twigs. In some areas, moose actually establish a hedge or browse line six to eight feet above the ground. In the spring, moose also graze in addition to browsing. During the summer, moose feed on forbs, vegetation in shallow ponds, and the leaves of birch, 
willow, and aspen. Moose can generally be found all across the northern forests of North America, Europe, and Russia. In Alaska, moose live in a large area ranging from the Stikine River in southeast Alaska all the way to the Colville River on the Arctic Slope. They are especially abundant on timberline plateaus along the major rivers of south central and interior Alaska and in recently burned areas that have generated dense stands of willow, aspen, and birch shrubs. Most moose make seasonal movements to calving, rutting, and wintering areas. They travel anywhere from only a few miles to as many as 60 miles during these transitions. It seems that these two bull moose are engaging in a little bit of friendly sparring. As it was not the rut season, they did not seem to be going at this too vigorously. These guys are sparring a little bit. we were treated to a rare but brief encounter with the porcupine. Famous for defending itself with its spines, the porcupine has excellent senses of smell, hearing, and taste. Like most herd animals, the caribou must keep moving to find adequate food. Large herds often migrate long distances, up to 400 miles, between summer and winter ranges. Smaller herds may not migrate at all. In summer, May through September in Alaska, caribou eat the leaves of willows, sedges, flowering tundra plants, and mushrooms. They switch to lichens, called reindeer moss, dried sedges, and small shrubs in September. Denali National Park and Preserve is located in the central area of the Alaska Range, a mountain chain extending 600 miles across Alaska. Its best known geologic feature is, of course, Denali, which, as we pointed out earlier, was formerly known as Mount McKinley. Its elevation of 20,320 feet makes it the highest mountain in North America. Its vertical relief distance from base to peak of 18,000 feet is the highest of any mountain in the world. The mountain is still gaining about one millimeter in height each year due to the continued convergence of the North American and Pacific plates. The mountain is primarily composed of granite, a hard rock that does not easily erode. This is why it has retained such a great height rather than being eroded away. There are three major rock provinces that run in east-west bands through the park. The oldest is in the north, and the younger ones in the south. The area is characterized by collision tectonics. Over the past millions of years, exotic terrains in the Pacific Ocean have been moving toward the North American landmass and accreting or attaching to the area that now makes up Alaska. The oldest rocks in the park are part of the Yukon Tanana terrain. They originated from ocean sediments deposited between 400 million and 1 billion years ago. The original rocks have been affected by the processes of regional metamorphism, folding, and faulting to form rocks such as schist, quartzite, 
Phyllite, slate, marble, and limestone. The name of Mount McKinley National Park was subject to local criticism from the beginning of the park. The word Denali means the high one in the native Athabascan language and refers to the mountain itself. The mountain was named after newly elected U.S. President William McKinley in 1897 by local prospector William A. Dickey. The United States government formally adopted the name Mount McKinley after President Wilson signed the bill creating Mount McKinley National Park into effect in 1917. In 1980, Mount McKinley National Park was combined with Denali National Monument, and the Alaska National Interest Land Conservation Act named the combined unit the Denali National Park and Preserve. At that time, the Alaska State Board of Geographic Names changed the name of the mountain to Denali. However, the U.S. Board on Geographic Names did not recognize the change and continued to denote the official name as Mount McKinley. This situation lasted until August 30, 2015, when President Barack Obama directed Secretary of Interior Sally Jewell to rename the mountain to Denali, using statutory authority to act on requests when the Board of Geographic Names does not do so in a reasonable time period. In Denali, Arctic ground squirrels are active from late April to early October, but the sexes and age classes show some differences in their annual activity patterns. Adult males are usually the first to emerge from hibernation. They dig their way through the snow and stay relatively close to their burrows until the snow cover melts. Breeding occurs in May and a single litter of 5 to 10 pups is born in June. The young develop rapidly and usually emerge from their burrows in mid-July. By late summer, young abandon their natal burrow and occupy a neighboring empty burrow or excavate a new one. So many different predators eat arctic ground squirrels that Adolf Murray called them the staff of life in Denali. They are one of the most important summer food sources for golden eagles, ear falcons, foxes, and grizzly bears.
there's a little rabbit in there. Yeah, it's real, I guess. <laughs> what do you think? You're going to take a picture of it. Later in the day, we see that the upper portions of Denali are becoming obscured by clouds. For this reason, many people who come to Denali National Park do not see the top of Denali, if they see Denali at all. I know if I need to move. Oh, there he goes. Just do it, will you? Yeah. 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 Yeah.